Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we're interested in working out how to approach number 13b here. So the question is, suppose that n is an odd integer, we want to prove that n squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. And we're told to not use induction. So induction would be a um, obvious way to think about trying to prove something like this, but if we can't use induction, there is another way um, to tackle this that helps us prove what we need to prove. So to get started, um, the first thing to think about that if n is odd, then really what we're saying is n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. What we need is a way to write n so that we always know we're dealing with an odd number and then we can work out what n squared minus 1 might look like. So what we can do is we can define n to be equal to 4p plus 1 or n is equal to 4p plus 3. Now if we define n like that, we're actually in essence, saying that n must be odd. And it might help to look at some examples. So for example, if we say p is equal to 0, then what does that give us? That would give us n is equal to 4 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, or n is equal to 4 times 0 plus 3, which is 3. If p was equal to 1, then we'd get n equals 4 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 5, or 4 times 1 plus 3 is equal to 7. If p was equal to 2, we get n is equal to 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9, or 8 plus 3 is 11. And hopefully you get the idea that this series of odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, you get with these two functions 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So what we can do now is we can evaluate n squared minus 1 by inserting each of these possible ways of representing n. So we can start by saying n squared minus 1 is equal to 4p plus 1 squared minus 1. So you see I've just taken n and inserted it there and then we can expand that so hopefully you know that if we've got a plus b squared, that's equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that's just a rule that hopefully you're familiar with. It's actually not too hard to prove if you just um, wrote out a plus b times a plus b and expanded it. But um, if you're trying to prove something like this, chances are I'm assuming you're aware of this uh, expansion. So let's just do that. So we'll get 4p squared which is 16p squared plus 2ab, so 2 times 4p times 1, which is plus 8p, plus b squared, so plus 1 squared, which is 1, minus 1. Those two 1s cancel, so we get equal to 16p squared plus 8p, and we can just bring out the 8 to help make our point. 8 times 2p squared plus uh, p. And there we see that when we're using the first possible way of defining n, we get something that is divisible by 8. So that's a good start. Now what we need to do is see if we get to the same place with our other way of defining n. So we'll say or n squared minus 1 is equal to 4p plus 3 squared minus 1. And I'll expand that in the same way. So we'll get 16p squared plus 2 times 4p times 3 will give us um, 24, oops, 24p. And then 3 squared is 9 minus 1, which equals 16p squared plus 24p plus 9 minus 1 is 8. And again, I'll just bring out the 8, and so we'll get 2p squared plus 3p plus 1. 
And at that point, we can say, therefore, if n is odd, then n squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. Because in each case, we get something where you can factor out the number 8. So that if you were to divide each of these by 8, you'd end up with still a positive integer. So there you have it. Again, as the question hinted, you could also try and prove something like this with induction, but we were told not to use induction here, so this is the other way to go about it. Um, if you encounter questions like this and you're not quite sure where to start, um, often when dealing with odd numbers or even numbers, the key or the place to start is to think about how you can define n in a way that will always give you either the odd numbers or in other cases it might be even numbers, whatever it happens to be. That's the key to getting started. So hopefully you found that helpful and uh, tick boom.